Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video we're going through the Fremantle vs Richmond game in which Fremantle came out 51 point winners 105 to 54 and pretty much dominated uh, to a certain degree the stat line I would say uh, with more relevant players getting tons and I mean Richmond don't really have many relevant players just because they're playing so inconsistently they don't get much of the ball and their good players are more so impact players so they don't generally have much ownership in terms of fantasy and super coach so before we jump into this video remember to like and subscribe turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload and let's get into this recap so Brayshaw 146 wasn't even the top scorer of the day. That went to Toby Nankervis. 22, 53, 30, 41. He ended up with 35, 8, and 8. Two free kicks, four, three against, one goal, one. That is a uh, completely clean, I believe. Yeah, nine, two. Yeah. Completely clean from free kicks, free kicks against, and goals and behind. A clean slate, zero from there. But then also... 20 kicks, 15 handballs, 8 marks, 8 tackles. He was absolutely huge in the second quarter where he did, yeah, he kicked his goal and a behind. I believe both, uh, well, one of them was off a mark. Um, so, yeah, he just did a lot of his work there, and that's the reason why he got up to a 1 4 8. So, 1 4 6. Josh Tracy did a lot of his work in the first and then a little bit in the third as well when he needed to ruck because Sean Darcy went down. We'll get into that implication. Um, well, in a little bit, but also in a lot more of my videos this week and how I can sort of fixture up and stuff like that because there are some implications there. Uh, but yeah, Josh Tracy did his uh, work there, 54, 12, 29, 14. Hayden Young, 105, um, 32 points in the first quarter, a lot of just handballs and uh, not really any non-disposal work there. But then in the second, third, he really did his work very, very cleanly with a 31 and a 27 and uh, point quarters and then a 15 in the last. It was a little bit annoying that he didn't push on, but in the end, 24 touches, five marks, three tackles, two goals, one for a 105 is still really decent. And I think one thing that I really liked seeing from him especially was he got back to really getting and something that we saw particularly well from Hayden Young in in the last in the first part of the season was him staying in the center when they were moving the ball through the ground or up the ground and he'd be that link there just free about 80 meters out from goal taking a mark and that's how he'd get a lot of his disposals so i want to actually just show you exactly what i mean by that with hayden young i don't know how well this is going to show it but we'll see if it does uh, because I think it's one thing that's been really strong in his um, in his game has been that uh, being available in the center for those uh, plus sixes. You'll see here uh, a little bit here, particularly. Well, I mean, he's on the he's a uh, middle of the ground. He's a uh, a midfielder anyway. But if we get back to here as well, I think this will show. It. Yeah, here just popping up around the mark. I really am intrigued to see if there's any sort of in this space here because that was sort of the space that I thought he'd be occupying a little bit more, um, a little bit more, maybe, yeah, a little bit out anywhere sort of in this patch here, I would sort of expect to see him um, occupy, but it doesn't look like he's maybe doing that particularly as much um, as I thought he would be. Yeah, you can sort of see it here as well, um, just getting around the ground pretty well. Um, so yeah, I think that is something that he does really, really well. Let's look at this game as well here. I think this will show it. Yeah, here, here's when he really does it, I think, is getting these possessions in this sort of half space here. And that's what he really does well. And I think that's one of the reasons why he gets back into form is because he gets to, let me just get rid of all that there. Yeah, there you go. And that's how he's, um, that's where he's going to get most of his points in that middle. I mean, it's a midfielder. He's going to get a lot of his points in that middle section. I just want to show you uh, Brayshaw or something like that to show you how he does it. But I'm pretty sure you'll see a slightly different um, sort of way and maneuverability about Brayshaw and how he, Brayshaw is a little bit more spread out, uh, whereas Hayden Young is a lot more centrally um, central. And then if I do go to Caleb Sarong, I think you'll see a similar thing that Caleb Sarong is more centralized, but it is, um, he's definitely still got some more spread compared to the likes of, let's pick up even this 27 touches here. See a little bit more spread, but definitely around the, um, around the ground a little bit more compared to that of a, um, not really picking up the half spaces as much as uh, the likes of a Hayden Young. 
he did it in this game particularly, but um, yeah, you can see a lot more spread and not really a particular heat map for him. If I just go back here and it won't let me get rid of those. There we go, that's better. Um, so there we go. Uh, Luke Jackson, 104. This is the interesting one about Luke Jackson. Second half, he had a 67, uh, which is really good. And the particularly thing that I really liked about it was that he has that rollback now where he is the, uh, the Ruckman. And he's not going to get you 30, 40 taps a game, I don't think. I don't think he's ever done that particularly. Uh, let me actually just check that. I can check that for you guys. Quickly scroll down here, match stats here. You can see best game was a 39 against St Kilda when he really didn't have a tap Ruckman because Royal Marshall just takes it out of the air. But other than that, he's had a couple games of 29, uh, a 30 here, but not really particularly too many games. He more so is around that um, 20 or so mark for a Ruckman. But the one thing he does really generally really well, uh, where he used to at least um, when he was rucking, was get the tackles and other sort of disposals up. That's how he really does it with high uh, handball mark. Uh, handball numbers 28 28 uh, 36 36 and 26 points respectively each week from handballing when he was the major ruck and then you can see this St Kilda game where he had 44 points worth in handballs and he got two 14 handballs from a half of rucking where in the first half he had one two three four uh, five six seven he actually had a lot of his handles, eight handles in the first half. But yeah, he did a lot of tackle work as well, which is really good to see. Luke Ryan, 101, he did a lot of work in the second half, 44, 33 in the second term as well. Jordan Clark did a lot of work late as well here. You can see here in the space of, what's that, six minutes, he had nine, 14, 16, 21, 27, 29 points in the space of six minutes to really catapult himself up to 98, which is a decent score. Not the perfect score, but against Richmond, when you had a lot of guys failing, it's an all right score. Wagner doesn't matter. Johnson is a guy that I'm looking at potentially in the where he plays and seeing how that works for next year. But I don't want to go down a natural improvement guy because he still has the capabilities of these 25, 40s and 50s. It seems like he's playing, I would suspect, somewhat of a wing role. Uh, Switzkowski, Sarong just got held. 17, 21, 23, 16. Yeah, just got held in it. Um, 27 touches, no non-disposal points. That's the reason why he's really struggled. Um, Chapman, Banfield, Aish, Cox, Amos, Frederick, O'Meara, Fife. Um, and the good thing about Caleb Sarong is he's going to drop his average right, right down. I don't know what it is at the moment, but it's going to be pretty far down. I would suspect, uh, what's it at the moment? 106, I believe that said. Yeah, 106, his L5 is 90, his L3 is 89. So he's really going to drop down in price, I think, dramatically. What was his? 126 break even. So yeah, he's going to drop. Um, so th there's that. Uh, then you've got here, just going down further, Chapman, Banfield, Aish, Cox, Amos, Frederick, O'Meara, Fife as well. Fife's really, I think, coming to the end of it now. And I think that's where they really want uh, Johnson to transition into that role. Uh, Walter Sharp, I thought, actually got off to a really good start and then failed dramatically after that. 18 points in the first, 3, 6, 7 in the last three. That's only 16 in the last three quarters. Really shows that he can just fade out of games. Darcy, 31, all of his work in the first quarter. And then the second quarter, he just got beat up on. Um, Sturt and Draper. Then we move over to Richmond. Nankovas took advantage of the likes of a um, of the likes of Darcy being out and basically did nothing. Well, he could have honestly scored about 160, 170. 11 minutes into the last quarter is when he really stopped scoring. He was on 148 then, got to 150 by the end of it, but really could have been could have lifted up towards that 170, 180. Marker, he had 26 touches, four marks, seven tackles, 36 hitouts, four free kicks, four one goal, one pretty much any stat line he filled. Tim Taranto with a 108, so I think he's starting to maybe get some consistency back into his game. 108, 127, 92, 108 in the last four weeks is pretty consistent. Jaden Short, just not consistent enough, 32, 28, 18, 24. Uh, Bolton as well, 102, I think just an impact player kicking, what did he kick in the end? Four goals, three, he just had a, a, a night out basically. Hopper, 92, 26 touches, five marks, four tackles, two free kicks, four and against. Um, yeah, he dominated the first half, then fell away. 92 though, not relevant. Graham Miller, Rioli, Mantle, Vlosten, uh, Vlosten down at 65 just sort of shows the inconsistency he can have. 
you have 19 disposals, 6 marks, but yeah, not going to be that top of the line guy that like Sicily type is. Sonsi, Kaczynski, Baker. Baker down here is also a little bit surprising, 53 points here. He's going to be really interesting next year. If, um, well, he probably will lose. He'll probably go to mid only, which really sucks given that he's probably going to move sides, I would suspect. Um, but a 53 here, average now, what is it at? Like 80 odd or so. I don't think he'll be an option at 80 odd um, midfield only next year. But it would be interesting with a uh, forward if he was um, a forward or a defender, which I don't think he will be. Uh, whether he would be an option. McCullough, 52, just not really showing terribly much at the moment. Um, Bolter, Brown, Ralph Smith, Blight, Broad, McIntosh, Campbell, Cumberland, and Banks. And that pretty much is the recap of there going through Fremantle and Richmond. An interesting one. Um, I, did, I thought Jackson was gone this week from what I had, um, like, not really picked up on, but what I had thought uh, would occur with the likes of... Um, with the likes of Darcy still rocking there. I thought he was a 60s guy, but now that Darcy's got a concussion, is out next week. Jackson now becomes sort of a 100 guy or so. And uh, yeah, now he is definitely still going to be in the side as I get down to hopefully just the one uh, rookie um, on field next week is the plan, as well as having a lot of cash to make that uh, rookie change out to the week after. But anyway, that pretty much is the video there. And I guess I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.